Could you check the levels again, please? Watch the waveform. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of This Is My Bourbon Podcast, where we talk about the spirit of Kentucky. My name's Perry. Thank you so much for being here. <sighs> I ran out of breath. <laughs> that was a that big sentence. inhale. <laughs> Perry, bring your being here, and then the entire gust of wind. Yeah. <laughs> well, I ran out of I, I didn't take a big enough breath uh, to lead into that really long sentence. Anyway, yeah. uh, with me this week is half of the Sleepy Boys home base co host, yeah. uh, Mr. Tanner Chaney himself. Some would say the better half. <laughs> you know what's funny? This is the second week in a row where I've had half of one group of people on, mm. and both of you guys have said Good. the better half. Good. That's fantastic. You, it's like inadvertent... Um, Synchronicity? Or uh, continuity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, welcome, Tanner. Thanks. Hey. I'm happy to be <laughs> back, I guess. <laughs> Hi. So, first four of the episode goes to... Uh, what we've been talking about with Tanner for a really long time. Um, so yeah. I mean, multiple times we've been like, hey, you really need to try this. It's not the Angel's Envy Rye. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> Which I thought about doing tonight, but we'll wait until Kurt comes back on, too. Mm. Um, it's the uh, cool. that bottle of Henry McKenna that Kurt and I have been swooning over for a, a good few months now. Um, I think he might call it Minry Hakenna. Minry Hakenna? Yeah, like drunk, drunkenly. He's just like, H-Mac? make some... Oh, h Max good. <laughs> That's like... <laughs> That's like the bourbon guys who come in like the big white unmarked vans. Yeah. They're, they're HMAC. That's an HVAC joke for you. H- Off to a good start. <laughs> I'm tired, so some jokes yeah, don't don't land. It's okay. You know, I feel like we're always tired recording this show. Yeah, well, we record yeah. at the end of the day on a weekday. We do. <laughs> I'm just getting off of work. Yeah. Someday, and we, we've been saying this for forever, too. Someday we do need to do... Um, like, like a, a day string where, of shows, yeah. yeah, like all in one day. And I know that by the third time, third or fourth episode, you know, however many we get to, oh, be a, it's gonna be silly, be a mess. But I'm so excited for it. Yeah, and I mean that might have to be like a bonus episode some week or sure, something. Sure, sure, but yeah. anyway, speaking of bonus episodes, um, not this past episode because this is coming out a week after we record. Um, not this last one with Hi, Chad, but future. um, yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, future Perry, have fun editing this one. I can already sense that it's going to be... <laughs> it's going to be a fun one. Um, we did a bonus episode where we reviewed uh, Blanton's Gold, uh, which was in tandem with our episode where we reviewed Blanton Straight from the Barrel. So if you have not checked that out, please go and do so. Um, but I just want to say up front, too, we've had, like, incredible numbers for listenership recently. Awesome. So, I mean, like, we're maintaining, like, a 1,000 downloads per 30 days. Wow. Which is, like, crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, I know. Like, it's not something that I ever thought was going to happen. Um, and, like, let me pull up the stats. Like, last seven days, we've had, like, just shy of, <clears throat> just shy of 325 downloads. That's which, incredible. Yeah. So, um, thank you guys so, yeah, much, you guys so for, much for listening. I mean, uh, it is crazy just to see numbers like that uh, consistently, too. Um but anyway, in that in that uh, spirit, that uh huh, keep making spirit jokes. Uh, I'm gonna it's say good, cheers. It's a good burp, honey. You just yeah. made. Yeah, and I hope here. this lives up to all of your wildest expectations. Yeah, I didn't smell it first. So I'm not mm. it. Well, the palate, the palate definitely lives up. For wow, me. <laughs> I know, right? That's pretty good. It's very different from from every bottle of Henry McKenna that I've had before mm. in that uh, most McKenna bottles, they don't quite have like the evolution that this does, mm. um, where this just kind of like continuously rolls over the tongue. Yeah. Um, and it's like constantly evolving and exploding and is just so smooth and <laughs> sorry, uh, it is, but it, it just has these incredible like earthy notes to it on the back end, which yeah. like I, you don't find with uh, with too many bottles of Henry McKenna. Um, what do you think about it? I think it's very good. Um, it's very, it's very cinnamony. 
mm-hmm. in a way I didn't expect. Um, Definitely. It's got a lot of that. I mean, it's got a lot of classic bourbon flavors, but it's also got, that, yeah, a strong hint of like a cinnamon or like, like all spice almost, just like some very yeah. spicy, not in, a, not in a hot sense. Oh, it's but, very like baked goods. Eating. Yeah, very um, seasoned. Um, and, and, and I mean, there's just so much going on that it's it's so hard to like pin one thing down <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. and be like, but it, I love it. I mean, I'm super happy with it. I forgot to turn the lights on in here. Uh, we'll get to it. It's a moody the, episode. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll get to it in a few. Um, <laughs> After dark. I don't remember. See, the nose, I think, is probably the weak point for me because hmm. um, it doesn't quite lead into yeah it's sort it's, of like a standard nose really yeah exactly like, this is a bourbon nose um but it, it makes me enjoy the the palate more though mm, it's a little um, bit more surprising yeah exactly like i you know i really wasn't expecting the palate to be that good based on you know what the nose was like sure um anyway so i hope that that uh <laughs> your expectations were no yeah i mean up. you guys have hyped it up so much that i don't think i can say anything that tops <laughs> it but it is it does live up i I've had Henry McKenna before, and that, like you said, is is the best Henry McKenna I've had. Yeah, and it's um, so it's so weird that it's off, um, not off palate, but just kind of off. Yeah, yeah, it's subversive almost. Yeah, it is in in that like it doesn't, it just doesn't line up with everything. And you, it, sure, it's a single barrel bourbon, but usually they have things that they check off. You know, cats just. We're also babysitting the animals. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but usually, you know, they go in and if they're trying a single barrel, they have things that they check off in terms mm-hmm. of like, oh, it has to have, you know, so many different things that that live up to what people expect. And right. What, you know, the the um, consistency of the product that we're putting out. And this is just like above and beyond. <laughs> yeah. Um, what a, what, Sorry, I was nodding and I realized no, it's not it's even all good. format. It's all good. Um, so I, I told you earlier today I wanted to ask you this question. Yes. Because I don't know. I, I want to have a conversation about it, and it's not bourbon related at all. Yeah. But I'm trying to figure out how I feel about it. Um, have you seen the trailer for the Cobra Kai show? Yes, <laughs> I YouTube? sure have. Uh, as soon as you sent it to me, I was like, maybe this is an offshoot. And it's not. You're talking about the revival. I am talking about the revival for of the Co- one, the only yes. Karate Kid. Um, actually, there are two, so it is not the one, the well, only, the original. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The OG. Um, how do you feel about it? I don't know because <laughs> I saw this a couple of months ago. I want to say, and uh, it's a YouTube Red thing, right? Mm-hmm. Is a show? Yes. Okay. So <laughs> the, the first, the first trailer I saw for it wasn't clear it wasn't clear if it was a movie or a show i don't know if you've seen different trailers or it's the same one um but i thought for a minute it was gonna be like a prequel sure and i was like okay i'm all right with this like see how this comes to power but i look the prequel that nobody was asking for and yeah i really want to see cobra kai's (laughs) rise to dominance um but the idea of uh, of both of both of those characters opening their own dojos and then competing it's it's all going to be in delivery right i'm shaking my i'm shaking my head (laughs) part of me thinks that it could work if it's self-referential enough sure yeah fan service right like it it, and maybe even a little meta maybe it gets a little bit like you sure look old or something like that you know what i mean like things like that well it's definitely been 30 years since we've last seen each other exactly like wow it's only been 15 years wink nod my thing with it and and i'm i'm still in this i can't remember exactly who said it but it put into words exactly how i felt it looks like a funnier die sketch without the jokes yeah it looks like it does it looks like an snl parody it doesn't look like they're taking it seriously yeah it looks like a digital short and like i'm not a big fan of the karate kid you know, I like think the original Karate Kid's great. Yeah, I mean it's it's it's, it's, it's really a good fun movie, it, but it's nothing that like I don't clamor over it. I don't put it in no. like a top ten sure. list or anything. Sure, but there are those people who just think that it's you know it, it's a testament of you know filmmaking at the time and like it holds up and everything. And I just don't I don't feel that way about it. It is a movie that is fun as the main point. Yeah, and therefore it's not gonna it, it delivers in fun. It is a fun film. Absolutely. It is. Ne- I I'm the same way. It is never for me going to be like. Well, that is a top ten movie because yeah. it's not 
doing anything creative. It's not doing anything. I mean, it is a, <laughs> it is a genre movie. Sure, it's in yeah karate, but like I there are some classic lines. The best, of course, being "Get him a body bag" because that guy's amazing. <laughs> um, actually, that's a fun thing to watch that entire tournament. Just that one guy. He yells some of the just see how stuff. He, yeah, yeah, he's basically yeah. just a heckler. It's great. <laughs> um, that again, yeah, the movie's great, but I, I, I don't think I'm, I'm in the mind that we don't need to remake literally everything. Um, I think most people are, which is interesting because they keep making lots of money. <laughs> um, I think that the remakes we choose, I would re- let, let's say this. I would. Well, this isn't really a remake. This is a continuation. Whatever. Call it what you want. Yeah, the revival and, of an and, old property. Yeah, this revival doesn't offend me that much because it's not that serious of a movie to begin with. Fair. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. But it just seems like I don't find Karate Kid sacred. And if it oh, were, I don't either. and if I don't it were, that went out the window with Jaden Smith. Yeah, so exactly. <laughs> I think I think it's whatever. And it is kind of strange. There, I, uh, two points I want to make. The first one is that it is kind of strange that. I mean, I kind of get the feeling that they saw the Jaden Smith Karate Kid movie and they were like, hey, I really miss those old days, don't mm. you, Ralph Macchio? And he was like, sure, I guess, but make me a car salesman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the other the other point is that I was listening to um, my, my buddy Bill Sheehy, who was on the show um, when we did our Star Wars episode, his podcast, uh, The Resistance Broadcast, um, which is all about Star Wars. They're talking about... Um, how there's kind of a window that gets closed if you've waited too long to do a thing. Mm. Like a, a new thing based on the, the the original thing that happened. Like and I feel like thirty years is about like, right. the like when does a sequel become like a revival? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And I I don't know what to label this. And it just feels It's not a sequel. And there awkward. were sequels. There were like Yeah, exactly. Party Kid three two, three, and four, I think. I don't know if there was four. I know for sure there was two and three. Two if was there were a way to look it up. Two was Machio and uh, oh my goodness, I'm blanking on. Uh, it's like Sensei. What was his Sensei's name? Oh, uh, Mr. Miyagi. Yeah, Miyagi. Pat when Marita. they went to what? Pat Pat Marita. I was just saying. Oh yeah, his yeah, name. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they they go back to Japan, I think. Okay, so and two, so and that's with Machio, and then three is the girl. Four was the girl. Four is the girl. Yeah, the next. So is three Machio too. Three is Machio too. So the first three are, are three, then. Machio. I can't believe that we're having we're getting this far into the conversation. Yeah. Um, but the next Karate Kid, which is the fourth one in the series, um, still had Pat Morita, didn't have Ralph Machio, and it was the one with the girl. Who's the girl? <laughs> Hillary Swank. That's what I thought. What? Yeah. What? I was gonna say that, and I How I have didn't I not want seen to blank this? on that. It's a young Hillary Slank. Yeah, Hillary no Slank. kidding. She's like 12 or 13 probably. Yeah. She's really young. Okay, well, anyway. <laughs> Not as good as Million Dollar Baby. Although, <laughs> kind of similar premise in a weird way. <laughs> in a very strange way, yeah. Yeah. I never thought Not about that. Not similar endings. Well, anyway, I just wanted to I wanted to establish our thoughts about something that is completely un related here on... The, yeah. That's my feeling. Um, okay, so uh, I have to ask you the the opener question, though. What, we, what you have uh, been drinking recently? So, uh, only things with numbers has been the joke in my apartment. Uh, 1783 and 1792. Okay. That's all I've been really drinking. So the same, same from a couple weeks ago. Yeah, too. I, yeah I haven't really drank um, in the past couple of weeks. Just, I don't know. There's one feeling it. Yeah. Not that I was, like, disliking <laughs> no, it, I but understand. just busy and, I understand. and doing other and things. And that'll lead kind of into our um, sure our topic too for today yeah um, um go ahead sorry no it's okay i was just gonna go into what i've been drinking but yeah, if you have more it. yeah no, okay no, no, <laughs> um let me see i finished off a bottle of weller 107 last night mm. um and by the way i just want to say i have a, a, a display of bottles on the table today for yes. recording purposes we don't have to have everything. I was kind sure. of just saying, hey, I put it out just kind of as options. Right. Um, I didn't really know what we were going to review. So um, anyway, uh, you know, the Weller product products for me are always kind of a go-to. So mm. um, I've been enjoying a lot of that. Um, I think I also finished a bottle of Buffalo Trace last night, I think. Yeah, I did. It was a very strange night. We had tornado warnings out in, yeah, uh, in central wild. Kentucky. and. Uh, an F1 touchdown 
Did it so, really? I didn't yeah, know that. Yeah, in uh, Grant County, I think. Hmm. This is, you know, stuff people nobody Real in the nobody, weeds. nobody cares about. No. Those listen outside of Kentucky, but... Um, <laughs> it was an I awesome was, night last night, um, like, weather-wise. Oh, yeah, it was fantastic. It felt so like, good. Yeah, and I mean... It was great, like sitting out on your porch drinking yep. drinking bourbon weather, which is exactly what I did. I put a picture I, up of it on, on that, Instagram. And, um, but anyway, yeah, that, that's kind of what I've been drinking recently. There's not been anything really stand out that yeah, I've, same. I've had. Um, but anyway, uh, so I guess we'll go ahead and move on to our topic. Yep. Um, which is. Getting burnt out on bourbon, mm. <laughs> which for me, like it hasn't, it hasn't happened in a while. Mm. Um, but it, you know, it has before, and you know, of course, I came back to it. Sure. <laughs> after a while, like but a jilted lover. Uh, what? What gets you burnt out about about bourbon? It's, I'm just picturing burnt, spelled B-O-U-R-N-T. Um, <laughs> Like I, Jason, Jason Bourne, but... <laughs> yeah, Jason Bourne. Bourne. Uh, it's the reboots of the reboot. <laughs> no, uh, what gets me burned about... Burn about bourbon was what I almost said. What gets me burned? What gets me burned? Uh, no, what, what gets me burnt out is just sort of... I don't know if it's bourbon in particular. I don't know if it's like, you know, after a night of, you know, more amorous <laughs> bourbon drinking. Um, I don't. I don't think it's like, you know, oh, I had bourbon last night i don't want to have it again whatever Mm -hmm. i think it's more a long-term thing and i think it's not even really related to bourbon like right now i'm going through a stretch where like i haven't really drank for a couple of weeks Mm -hmm. you know three weeks maybe a month um and not not that that's like an an aversion to bourbon it's just nothing that's like man i really want to drink this tonight Mm -hmm. um maybe a beer here and there maybe you know a cocktail here and there but like nothing substantial to where i'm like you know, I really, really want to drink this. With bourbon in particular, I think it's, I don't know. I think it's like, there's a certain flavor profile that when I'm craving bourbon, I'm just like, I want, I want bourbon. Yeah. And I think that comes in waves. And I think sure. that's why I'm always the person to have been like, eh, just kind of drinking the same stuff. <laughs> because I, I don't, I don't feel the need to. You don't get bored. Right. I don't feel the need to explore yeah. more bourbons. It's just, I want bourbon as opposed to, I want Buffalo Trace or I want <laughs> sure. Weller or whatever. Yeah. Um, see, for me, it's not necessarily, like, I I do every now and then go, oh, I would like to change it up a little bit and, mm. you know, have a, have a beer or two or, you know, a glass of wine or something. But um, really with bourbon, it's not so much that I get... I get like full on burnt out with drinking it. I do get really burnt out with um, hunting though. Mm. I get, I, it, especially when I see the prices that stores will put up for yeah. stuff because the secondary market, well not the secondary market, but some stores, you know, they just gouge you like it's like their life depends on it. Sure. I mean, I, you know, and, and, and everybody who's listening knows but, you know, it, for a very specific example, you have something like um, the Buffalo Trace Antique Collection, which is supposed to be market value like $100, and $110. Mm. I've seen it consistently in stores anywhere from 300 to $500. Jesus. It's ridiculous. And, like, it, it makes me want to go, you know what, just give me my bottle of Wild yeah. Turkey 101. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I'll be happy. It's disheartening, right? Yeah. And... But, like, I mean, I, I do still enjoy the hunt. I do mm-hmm. still enjoy finding stuff that, like, uh, for example, last week, um, I was on my way to Chad's to record his episode that came out um, today as we're recording last week when this, <laughs> this one yeah. comes out. Um, sorry. Broken timeline. Yeah. Um, and I just stopped in a store just to, you know, see what they had. I'd never been in there before. And they had this bottle of... Um, Yellowstone bourbon from like 2011. They don't make it anymore. Yeah. It's a 90 proof version. And like, you know, what they make now is, um, 93 proof. What what I'm getting at is that I enjoy stumbling onto things just as much as I do, you know, having something that I consistently enjoy. Right. Um, and I will still go, still go and hunt for stuff, but I just get so tired of, (laughs) <laughs> yeah, and I think that's natural to anything, prices. right? Like, I, sure, yeah. I'm, I'm to the point now where you know, 
the curation, the, you know, um, reviewing all of the aspects of bourbon are sort of a hobbyist point sure. now. Um, where some people just, you know, do it as a consumer. Um, I think it's similar to, like, you know, I, I play games a lot. Sometimes I yeah. just get burnt out on games. Not that I don't love the medium, not that I don't, yeah. you know, don't want to play games. It's just, like, nothing really suits my fancy. And that's kind of it. It's, like, what is in my library or what is in my, you know, my cabinet or whatever. And just, like, man, none of this suits me. And instead of going out and trying to find something, spending more money to try to find something that's yeah. going to suit me, I just say, you know what, I'm fine. Give it some time. Yeah. Yeah, and, and too much of anything is a bad thing. Yes. You know. And, uh, you know, it's just one of those things. You have to kind of accept it as it goes in waves, and it'll come back around to you eventually. Yeah. Um, so, like, when you get burnt out, though, yeah, um, I, I kind of um, alluded to it earlier, but what do you gravitate towards um, instead? If I'm, if I'm going to drink, uh, probably beer. Yeah. And that's my, that's my mainstay anyway. Like, a, a just, you know, a beer at dinner. Again, I've, I've not been drinking a lot. Probably the entirety of this year really um but happy april yeah jesus it is april it is april already yeah um yeah yeah i just kind of just go to beer and that's about it like i'm not i'm not a huge like i'm gonna try tequila like i've never owned a bottle of tequila just because (laughs) why i'm not i mean i don't know if there's really anybody who drinks tequila neat right of course you know you shoot tequila yeah which i guess is technically drinking it sure yeah (laughs) but just in small quantities yeah. Um, I mean, like I said, too, I drink, I'll drink beer if I get kind of burned out on bourbon, but I don't, um, I can't drink a lot of beer. Really? Yeah. I can, I, I just get so full. Quantity or over time? Like, oh, quantity, like in, in like in a setting. Yeah. Like you can't drink six like, beers or whatever. Yeah. And I mean, granted, you know, it's not like you should be drinking more than like a couple glasses of anything. <laughs> right. But, you know, I really can't go past like, two beers i just get so full Mm, yeah (laughs) um and especially like if i'm eating while i'm i'm drinking it you know um it's usually at a bar um right so it's gonna be like heavier foods not heavier foods necessarily but a lot of carbs and yeah exactly um so it's just kind of hard to maintain and and manage all that (laughs) <laughs> all, all at the same time. Sure. Um, I said wine. I don't really drink wine too much anymore. I did. Is that because we dunked on you for drinking wine that one time? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> I promise, guys, I don't drink wine anymore. No, but, like, I drink it every now and then, but, like, I, I drank it more when I was kind of starting to drink. Mm. Um, An introductory sort of thing. Yeah. Um, like, as I was discovering what I what I liked, and I still like wine quite a bit, it's just, like, I'm not, I'm not, I would rather spend my money on bourbon. Right. Um, Shocked to no one, really. Yeah, really. <laughs> as I host a bourbon podcast. Yeah, seeing as we're here. Um, I do like margaritas, too. Oh, me too. Yeah, like pre-made margaritas is great. Like, yeah. that's what I'm saying. I've never bought a bottle of tequila just to make margs. Okay, I had something on her nose. Sorry. Um, what were we saying? Oh, yeah. Um, and, and then like, you know, I'm, I'm always interested in, in trying new things. I always say I'll try anything once. Sure. You know? Yeah. Um, like I had a, I have a bottle of cognac. <laughs> Why? I got, I got, I got like, uh, I got it like as a, as a wedding present, um, at our stock the bar party. Right. Um, I think actually my mom and my dad gave it to me. Um, <laughs> and that's, that's a whole other story sure. too. Um, but like I opened it the other day cause I was like. May as well try it. Yeah, it's here. And it's really good. Like, I'd never, I'd never had cognac before. I have no idea what it tastes like. Um, it's very bourbon-y. Mm. But it's more, um, it has a thicker consistency to it. Okay. Like, like, it, it, bourbon like syrup? Uh, kind of, yeah. Um, I mean, it did very much remind me of, like, drinking syrup or something. But, sure. um, it doesn't have so much of, like, the, the earthy tones to yeah. it, the, the, bourbon does but i mean it's still good it's still serviceable you know i'll I'll probably have it again in another two years (laughs) yeah yeah same bottle (laughs) yeah no kidding um so how do you find it if like you get out of it or like you're trying to get out of it how do you find is the best way to do that it's just one of those things where it just kind of happens i think yeah i think it's natural i think it's more of a you know i don't 
I don't think about, I think, and I don't mean this is like unique way, but I don't think about bourbon as much as you do, I think. Sure. I think yeah. it's more of like a, um, I mean, you're, you're a fiend for knowledge about bourbon. Yeah. So I, I think that that's part of what sets us apart, but like I, you know, I can go two, three weeks without really thinking like, you know, I want a glass of bourbon. Yeah. But then all of a sudden it'll be like, I want bourbon. Yeah. Or, you know, maybe it's like an occasional thing, like, uh, not in the sense of like happens every so often, but like happens on occasions. Yeah. Um, on special occasions. So like, you know, going out to dinner, might get a cocktail and look at their cocktails and be like, Oh, I want the old fashioned. And then that yeah. reawakens yeah, the, for sure. the bourbon spirit. Um, for me, it's almost like I kind of just have to not force myself to get back into mm. it, but it's like, it's like I have to kind of start from the bottom again. Hmm. And not like I have to go back to, it's not like I'm starting from day one. I'm not starting with like Jim Beam again like, or anything. Like KG or something. Yeah. But, but like, I just, I have to kind of step back from something that might have, I don't want to say had been too much. Yeah. But, you know, find something that's more standard. Maybe it's Buffalo Trace. Maybe it's Elijah Craig. Or, right. You know, right. whatever. Right. Um, so it just kind of depends, you know, I mean, yeah. it, it, it's, it's a matter of like, you know, what kind of burnt out am I situation, you know? Yeah. It, oh, it's all, it's all very subjective to the, mm. <laughs> sure. to the situation. Um, this is going to be a quick episode. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's two people. It's less, less opinions. Yeah, exactly. Coming in, yeah. Yeah. Cause I mean, we're, we're at like 30 minutes and we're both like, okay. Yeah. Maybe I'll find like a, a little bonus episode or something to do. Um, sure this week just to just kind of pump things up a bit that's not mm. the word i wanted to use but that's all i could think pump of. it up <laughs> it just starts playing some like techno jams well, the behind us. um anyway so i guess we'll go ahead and move on to uh our review for the episode the eve uh tanner dealer's choice what do you want to what do you want to review i'm gonna nose mill yeah have I'm, you had it before no oh dude you know uh, i picked it huh you no know i picked it why? It's got a green bottle. It does have everybody else's. Have you noticed that like all all yeah, the you've bottles got a very green aesthetic very, it's going a very on. green night. So I picked the greenest of the greens because I've heard it's not easy being that bottle. <laughs> Thanks, Kermit. Man, I'm really on like some Jim Henson shit That's on this very podcast. Interesting, yeah. <laughs> did the big Bort goof? That was the last time. Yeah, last time it was just the two of us. You did. Uh, yeah. Susan. Then I was very tired. Susan was Street. loopy. No, I'm just normal tired. Uh, so here's the thing about this bottle of nose milk. It's been open for a little while. I'll save that pour for another time. Um, there is no more of Noah's <laughs> milk. <laughs> so it, I've had some, some time to let it breathe and everything. So and I don't know if I've ever had it out of a Glen Karen before either. Thanks, of course, to our sponsors, Glen and Karen. Glen, Glen and Karen. Karen. Thank you, guys. A uh, couple quick things about Noah's milk before we hop into it. It's a Willet product. Mm. Um, it used to be 15 years old. They took the age statement off the bottle. So I think now it's anywhere from like 10 or 11 up to Not 15 often years. Not you the phrase, it used to be 15 years old. In just like a, any context. <laughs> it used to be 15, now it's 11. Like yeah. what? That's not how that works. Um, so like on the label, you know, now it says this batch of bourbon was aged in wooden barrels. Barrels until fully mature used to be like until like 15 years mm. old. Um, well, they can get away with the most vague wording ever there with yeah. fully mature. Yeah. You could say it's six months. I'm going to do something. Okay. I'm not going to tell you what the proof is. Oh, shit. All right. <laughs> I want to see I want to see what you think about it. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Um, sure. Yeah, tell I me have, after. I have a theory, and I'm seeing if I can test this theory. Okay, I'll be your Based, guinea pig. Yeah. Um, so, first off, what do you think about the nose? You it's interesting. It. It's very watery, I think is a good way to describe it. Like, it's not, it's not <laughs> super it's, pungent. It's not very present. Yeah, I think um, it's not not maybe not necessarily watered down, but just like a. It's like a. It's like if you had bourbon nose concentrate, and you sure portion it out like you would yeah. orange juice concentrate. Like it's like it got like a little bit of like a wateriness to do it. Do you do you do you smell any of like the the peanut butter, on there? Because I consistently will get nuts no, or peanut butter. I don't with it. I get butterscotch. I get lots I of butterscotch, that. but yeah. um, there's some no, I don't get peanut like, butter. like grassiness mm. to it too, like the the earthiness behind it. But um, let's let's find out, shall let's, we? Let's try it. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. 
<laughs> wow. Okay. I think you spoiled me with the Henry McKenna. Because <laughs> that is... Not a fan? Interesting. Not as the nose would suggest. It is very pungent. Yeah. No, it's it's extremely... It's a slap in the face. Yeah. I mean, it, it's got it's got a lot going on there. Um, for me, like, the... Everything that I was saying with, like, the nuts and everything, um, they are pretty present. Um, God, I'm reeling from that one. <laughs> it's like one of those where you just, like... Just keep going. Yeah, it's one of those where you just, like, are, are sort of taken aback by it. Mm-hmm. Um, which some people like. When you say that... Not so, for me. so you don't you don't mean that in a good way, then? No. Um, yeah, it's not taken aback by the amazement of this bourbon. It's taken aback by just the utter force of it um like you punch me in my tongue uh tongue punch that's a completely different term i don't think that's making the final cut and if it is kudos it's in there all right uh <laughs> you used that phrasing didn't you i did hey put the cat down so she can get to her just just hello hi she won't she won't get you she's very sweet hello hello <laughs> I gave you to your enemy. Yeah, that's fine. Anyway, like, it still has a... I, I always say this, that, like, the standard bourbon palette for me is just caramel, vanilla, and and oak. Yeah. This takes all of that and, for me, still has, like, the, um, that, like, really prominent, like, nut on it, too, and, like, there's some sugariness to it. It's definitely nutty. Um... And then, like, there's even something, I don't know what it is, but there's something akin to, like, bubble gum? <laughs> I actually know what you're saying Yeah, here. like, I, I don't know if it's the sugar, because it is very specific, like, hubba bubble. It's more like a gum flavor. Yeah. Like a, like a sargum, kind yeah. of. Or sargum, however you say it. I, I don't know. I mean, it's definitely there. I just can't quite put my finger on yeah, it. Yeah, no, it's in the it's in the it's in the finish for sure. Yeah, but like it. Yeah, no, I absolutely understand what you're saying. It's a very faint, but mm -hmm. as you said that, that sort of resonated with me. I. It's very ethanol-y for me. Like it's very, and I don't know if that's because of proofage because you've not told me, but <laughs> it's it stings a little bit more than an average bourbon, and not again. I. Call me the the bourbon barrel baby or whatever. Baby bourbon boy. Yeah, whatever it is. Um, bourbon baby boy? I don't remember. Go back to the first episode. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> basic bourbon guy. Um, that one. That's not it. I, that is, to me, and I understand a lot of people uh, seek this out, but to me is an unappealing quality. Sure. That it is that strong. Like, I'm not, I took my first, you know, average size drink, I took a small drink, uh, about two minutes ago, and I'm not like, I need to take another drink of this. Yeah. Um, in fact, it it doesn't, like, bother me, but it is a little... Abrasive? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's off-putting. I could see that. In a way. I can understand that. Um, so if you had to... If you had to guess at what the proof was, what would you say? It's the normal proof for a bourbon. <laughs> I know. 90. That's what I was thinking. I just want to make sure. Yeah. I think... How high proof was the last one we did for context? How high it was, was the Henry McKenna? No, no, no. The last episode. It was really high proof, right? Oh, the... the like, um, straight from the barrel. That was like 125.6. I was going to say like 120. Okay. Yeah. I think this is probably 110. You are not far off. Okay. It's 114.3. All right. Um... And like I, I, here's my theory. My theory is that the more that you cut a bourbon, mm -hmm. the more you're getting the alcohol on it, and you're losing the flavor. Okay. And okay, and like in my saying. experience, all, every I, I feel like across the board we've gone. Oh, it doesn't it doesn't drink like you would think it would at at 125 proof or sure. at 130. That's really smooth for the proof that we've said that yeah. a number of times. And like that to me indicates that the balance is better 
if it's a foolproof, barrel proof, cast strength, whatever. Yeah. Alcohol. So I'm I I it it leads more credence to my desire to drink <laughs> yeah foolproof bourbons right because you're getting a better more well, well-rounded experience I whereas that. where like you have it's something pure. that's yeah you have something that's 80 or 90 proof there's something about it where like the alcohol is kind of competing with the water sure the ethanol is competing with the water um and it just makes for a less enjoyable and and less um well meshed experience i think this I speaks guess. to both of our um tenures i guess you could say with bourbon which is like you know i've i want to clarify you said tenure because it almost sounded like you said 10 year no sorry tenure <laughs> we're both we're both under yeah. 25 yeah that would be <laughs> quite a thing um no our tenure with yeah. bourbon um which is like you know you Obviously, explore blur, blur, blurbin. Blurbin. You explore. Explore the blurbin. You explore bourbon. Oh, blurbin would be a great name for a blog. Yeah, it would be good. Oh, I gotta. Uh, no, I gotta stay. I gotta stay on brand. Yeah. Never mind. Anyway, continue. Um, but I feel like you explore bourbon more than I do, and therefore you've probably inherently, and I think you drink bourbon more than I do. I think we both easily say that. Um, uh, yeah. I think that you inherently have built up. This it's like coffee, right? Where it's like when you build you, up a tolerance. Yeah, but yeah. not not in an alcoholic sense, but in like a, in like a sorry, not in you relation. Call me an alcoholic. In relation <laughs> to the alcohol. Um, I know not, you. Not know from an alcohol mean. standpoint, but for just from a flavor standpoint, um, it's like you know if you eat or if you drink a lot of coffee, uh, you eventually want the stronger brew. Yeah. Similar thing here, where it's like you want. It's okay. Just keep the pure experience. The dog squeaking her toy at Tanner. Just um, <laughs> I'm a very squeaky boy, uh, <laughs> squeaky sleepy boy. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's it's I think it's a similar thing, right? Where it's like I've sort of done more mainstream bourbons, or even if it's you know a, like a lower proofage bourbons, I've not really explored that. And so for me, this is this caught me off guard. Yeah. Um, and it may be that sort of tolerance to the to the ethanol flavor to the higher proofage. I. I agree with you to a point. I get where it's like, you know, the purer you get, the further down the, you can taste everything that goes into it standpoint. Yeah. Um, for me personally, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm a big fan of, uh, like cost assessment, which is, we've, we've talked about this. Yeah. At yeah, Dossian, yeah. But like, even with this, where it's like, at what point am I willing to take, a take a hit on proofage in order to enjoy the bourbon at a basic level more? Sure. I find lower proofage is more more enjoyable because it's less in your face. Now, granted, we've reviewed stuff on this show that have, have proved that sort of uh, in flux, which is like, you know, this high-proof bourbon does not taste like a high-proof bourbon. Yeah. Um, but by and large, I would rather just drink like a 90 mm-hmm. and just enjoy the evening than like try to challenge myself or try to um, – swing up in a way and uh, see for me like i'm i'm going to enjoy like the higher proof um regardless like you said you know enjoy enjoy the evening like for me like i'm still i'm still gonna have a good night sure yeah i'm not know? saying you're like torturing yourself yeah yeah, yeah i'm exactly. just saying we're at different points in our for sure experience. yeah i completely i completely understand what you're saying i just wanted to make sure that i had clarified that like drinking high proof bourbon for me it's not, it, it's not, you're not, not doing it for the drunkenness. Yeah, exactly. I'm that. doing it for the experience. And it's also not like ripping the hair off of my head or mm. anything. Like I really do enjoy the, <laughs> Tanner does not. That's so funny. As soon as I, I said enjoy, you winced. Um, God, it's so strong. <laughs> it's weird because, it, sorry to interrupt, but like, no, it's, no, no, you're good. It's weird because we've, we've done higher proof bourbons that are not nearly mm-hmm. as, pungent and i keep using that word but like aggressive as this bourbon yeah like this this tastes like a 140 or something i don't even know if that exists <laughs> but like it, oh it does okay it, it does it, it tastes <laughs> like something way higher than what it is um sure like this is this is almost i would i would call this like a shooting bourbon i wouldn't just drink this straight interesting because it is so high i would be really interested to find out what how this does how it holds up in a cocktail Mm. um because you're taking a lot of notes that aren't typically found like 
it's so. I'm gonna use this phrase. Okay. I'm gonna uh, and like I'm gonna hold on to it. All right. It's so nut forward. <laughs> of course, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna own that phrase. Yeah. It's so nut forward. No, I get that. That like I, I'm trying to imagine it in an old fashioned, mm. and I almost can't. Right. Because that's not a flavor profile you associate with old fashioned. No, exactly. Like you're you're going for the fruitiness um, in, in in an old fashioned. And this to me, like it, I want to try it. I want to experiment with it in in cocktails. I don't know how it's going to do. Yeah, <laughs> necessarily. This this bourbon is is almost to the point for me. And again, my palate is not as vast as yours, but I think Thank that you. yeah, <laughs> I think that. For me, this tastes so strong that I would almost, I would believe you if this was a different type of alcohol. Like having, like if it weren't bourbon. Right. Like you could have told me this is what scotch tastes like. I'd Interesting. Like, okay. This is close enough to bourbon that I get the similarities, but this is yeah. not bourbon. Um, so like it's, it is unlike any other bourbon I've had, which is a good thing, but yeah. it is not good in that respect. <laughs> it is it is not what I like. From it's not what bourbon. you expect with bourbon. Yes. Yeah. 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 I get that. Yeah. So this is not going to I mean, I'm gonna go ahead and predict it probably correctly. This is not gonna rank as high for you as it, no, it no, probably no. is for me. No. Um so for in speaking of ranking, for anybody who is no, new to the show or needs a refresh, we have a I feel like every time I say that I have to take a short little breath before I launch into like explaining the yeah, system. the rigmarole. Yeah, <laughs> I want to like cut of me every time going before I. Anyway, um, we have a review system of nose, palate, finish, and price. Each category is out of five, and at the end we tally it up to a total out of twenty, uh, and then you know whether or not you should go and buy this bourbon. Um, it's a little more complex than uh, the podcast's uh, system of buy bar buy bar pass, but oh well. <laughs> yeah, it's our system. We're taking the second to it. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so Tanner, do you need some time or are you? No, 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 I'm fine. Okay, cool. Let's go for it then. Um, nose. I'm going to give it another big, uh, sure. Yeah. Here. Do you want me to go ahead and tell you the price or do you want to wait until you actually get to? Okay. Um, I don't want that to inform other decisions. Uh, so the nose for me, it's fine. It is. <laughs> I've said that about several noses. I think I, uh, you have. My, my standard of having it as a candle. I don't know. It's... I look through, I like, I've, I've got the, um, for all you number nerds out there, I have a, a spreadsheet of nice. our um, <laughs> of our reviews, and and consistently, actually, there have only been a couple that you haven't liked the nose on. Yeah. Um, everything else is really like four, fours smells. or fives. This one's not going to be. Yeah. Uh, this is a three. Like this is just okay. as middle of the road as you can get, right? Like it's. I'm sure. Not give it a two and a half because I never give anything halves. Uh, but like it. It's it's fine. It's it's not offensive. It's not bad. It's it's good but it's not great like i, I, I give it a three um <laughs> palette this is gonna be fun for for me listening to this like i i'm i'm really interested in what you're taking another drink okay because i feel like i may have over over drank my first set <laughs> God. He really just doesn't like it. It just doesn't sit with me, dude. Like, it makes me cough. Um, like You could probably hear it there in my voice. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Jesus, that wasn't forced. <laughs> and it's not... Okay, I'll say this. It is not bad. It is it is not a bad flavor I think at what, the end of the day. Sure, I just think that what you... Like, the way that you're talking about it indi- would indicate that, like, for you, it's just too aggressive. Yes. It's, it's yeah. in my face. It's... No joke. I know I made the joke earlier. It's a little tongue numbing. Like, yeah, it is very, very um, ethanol forward for me. So I, I don't want to say that this is the worst palated bourbon that I've had on the show, which I probably gave what like a two. Did I give anything a one? Uh, you've not given anything a one as far as I'm close pal- to it. The uh, Old Forester nineteen twenty, you gave a two. Yeah, I mean, you even give okay. I like that we have this. At you gave right you now. gave Jim Beam White Label a three, yeah. I <laughs> that might be a better bourbon. Interesting. That's really interesting. As far to as me. just again, I am basic. I understand this, but <laughs> this is so. It's not an enjoyable experience for me. It's not. Yeah. 
I can't recommend this because I don't enjoy it. I sure. understand oh, that yeah. some people... And, that, and that's entirely, you know... Yeah, but, I understand yeah. that this is maybe the bourbon for some people. I get that. It is... I will say this. It is a good bourbon in the fact that no matter what, you're going to have an opinion about it. Yep. This is not a middle of the road. It's fine, whatever. It's a conversation bourbon. piece. Yes. Um, so I think actually, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to recant me saying it's more worse palette. I think I'm going to give it a one. Um, wow. For me, this is just not what I look for in bourbon. Uh, finish is actually okay. The finish is not nearly as aggressive as the initial hit. Um, and that's where I do start picking up on the, some of the, the nuttiness, the, the butterscotch, that kind of flavor. Um, so that is the, like, sitting here talking about it tastes way better than the initial drink. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I think the I think the finish is fine. I'll give it a two. Um, <laughs> and uh, so what's the price? Okay, so the price on Noah's Mill... Typically ranges anywhere from like fifty to sixty dollars. Okay. <laughs> I know. I know. Sorry I know for the pregnant pause. No, no, no. It's okay. I know what you're. I know what you're thinking here. Yeah. Again, I am. I would rather buy. I think this would. I thought about this uh, on the way home the other day. I think the difference between you and Curtis and myself is. I think at the end of the day, I would rather have a cheaper good bourbon than a more expensive great bourbon. Sure. Um, which I, I know, I, I know that might sound weird, but like I know what you're saying, though. Yeah, I think that at some point there reaches a there reaches sort of a, I guess the top of like a bell curve, right? Where it's like at this point in particular, this is where my cutoff is. You have a ceiling. Yes, yeah. exactly. Um, or at least where it would take a much better bourbon for me to spend that much money. Yeah. $50, $60 isn't that bad as the cheapskate of the, the podcast. <laughs> um, it's not that bad. That being said, I think there are better bourbons at the price. Um, it's That's a that's an okay price. I, I, I'll give it a three just for... Okay. You know, I understand that for some people that might be a steal. Again, I get that this is some people's bourbon and it's it just is, not mine. Yeah, yeah. Um, I totally understand that, and I I get it. Um, what does that give me like a nine? It's a nine out of twenty. Yeah, man. Um, oh man, that doesn't surprise me. I am not a fan of this bourbon, and not again, again to to reinstance once again. I understand that I am not dunking on people if you like this bourbon. Mm-hmm. It is just not my cup of tea. Um, and I think that's okay. I think it's interesting to to find bourbons that are like that for all of us. I mean, yeah, ho- hopefully sure. there's a bourbon one day that I'm like, yeah, this is awesome, and you're like, no, it's terrible because <laughs> it's interesting, right? And that, that is those are the kinds of bourbons you want to show your friends, and it's like, yep, what do you think about this? You know, it's so polarizing that's interesting, um, and, and you know that's that's a big thing right now is polarization. So I think yep. that I think it's an interesting bourbon. I'm glad I tried it. Yeah, I'll never buy it. I mean, and and like I just uh, got done given this my my total score and everything but um i will say i i I talk pretty highly of this but my final score i don't think quite reflects that okay um sorry i'm altering it just a no you're good (laughs) just a little bit um on the nose i gave it a four okay it's not often that i find a bourbon that i like the nose interesting the most on um Mm, i see it's for me it's like overly pleasant hmm and i don't mean that like like perfume yeah in a way where you get like gaggy i kind of Mm. like there's so much going on to going on with it that like i almost um almost don't know what to do with myself (laughs) (laughs) yeah but I do really, really enjoy the nose. Um, I mean, and, and like on that note of like a perfume, like if it's the right perfume, I enjoy smelling it. Yeah. If it's the right bourbon nose, I also enjoy smelling it. Yeah. Um, this isn't, this isn't the perfect bourbon nose. Of right, course. You right. know, I mean, it's a, I gave it a four. I didn't give it a five. Um, but it's definitely up there. Um, palette. I gave a 3.5. Okay. Um, I think that it's just like it is it's again it's there it's just not quite it could be pushed a little bit higher hmm, um, interesting. I don't know and and like it does I've, I've said so many times on the show before like I just said this episode um 
it has everything that I look for in bourbon. Mm. Um, but that little bit of heat and um, the the nuttiness of it too um, makes it for me more than just a middle of the road palate. Gotcha. <laughs> Uh, now finish though, I'm going to give it two. Okay. And the reason I'm giving it a two is because it's not, it's fine. Mm. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) It's fine. It's serviceable, but it doesn't, there's a weird kind of aftertaste. Yeah. With it where it like it, like it sits on my tongue in a very Mm. bizarre way. Yeah. Um, it doesn't have the Kentucky hug in the middle of the chest that I really enjoy with some higher proof bourbons. Um, but the finish is just kind of, it's just kind of present, um, and not really in a good way. So I'm going to give it a two. Um, and then price, I gave it a 3.5. Mm. Um, again, like it, it, it's very unique. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, there's, there's really nothing else like it. I mean, and sure. Will it has other products. Right. Um, and honestly, I would be interested in doing like a blind Willet flight. Yeah. Um, between like their, their actual distillates, like their, um, I, I can't remember all the names of it. It doesn't matter. Um, mm-hmm. but including this in there and seeing what I actually, you know, how it held up against everything else. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I'm going to give the price a, a 3.5, you know, it, it, all things considered, I think that it's not necessarily like justifiable mm, right. <laughs> with the price, right. but it is something good to have around, yeah. um, not just for yourself, but for other people too. So my, my total comes out to a 13 out of 20, not gotcha. bad, not the worst I've ever given anything. The worst I've ever given anything on the show is a three out of 20. What's um, the worst I've ever given anything? Uh, the worst that you have ever you given give anything. Three? Um, I gave, so, uh, in three out of 20. Three out of twenty. What did you give? You gave it a zero on something. I gave it a zero on something. I um, was I here for this? No, you were not. Okay. This was with uh, Chad and Sarah. All right, that's what um, happened. This was uh, the 2017 Old Forester Birthday Bourbon 96 proof. I remember you talking about this. Um, last year they came out with two different proofs. They had a 95.4 and then a 96, mm. which is really bizarre. I know. Yeah, that's weird. Um, but anyway, so the, there's something about the 96 to where it's just horrible <laughs> okay i mean as can, as is evident from my um my score anyway the worst that you have given anything um there's an 11 there's a 10 the worst you've given is the old forester 1920 which was a 10 out of 20 okay um you gave twos across the board except for the nose which was a four for you um <laughs> and if you good. go back and listen to that episode that's really i i think i heard it recently again mm. and it's really funny because um, you go like nose is a four and that's as good as it's going to get or something, <laughs> something to that effect. Yeah. And it just, it just goes downhill from there. <laughs> um, anyway, um, so my total score was, uh, 13 out of 20, Tanner's a nine out of 20. It's funny though, because I am, I'm going to go against what our score would dictate. And I would say, I would encourage people to at least try this, mm-hmm. uh, maybe in a bar setting. Um, but yeah, like, for sure. I, I really do think that this is going to land really nicely for some people. It's just not me. Yeah. Try something before you buy it. I think it is. Or not, not always, but I think this is, um, one of those rare cases where you do kind of have to give it a, give it a test run before you, you, you go full in. Anyway, so that's our review for the episode. Um, we've actually kind of padded this out a little bit more than I yeah, thought we were going to. Well, which is, I got very opinionated about this bourbon. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> uh, so we have to jump into now that we're done with our review. Mm-hmm. You know what it is. Tips and bits. It is tips and bits. Do we have a jingle for this? Because I really... No, I want a jingle for it. I need to write a jingle or, or let somebody else write a jingle for it. I yeah. don't know. I, I do plenty of music writing. I'll let somebody else take <laughs> yeah, the brunt true. for this one. Yeah, it's like... Hey, design this thing for this person abroad. It's like, that's what I do all day. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Tanner, what are your tips and bits? Um, I want to recommend uh, a video game uh, that I found recently and it caught me off guard. Um, and it's it's not like an unpopular game or anything. Actually, I'm going to recommend two. So uh, there's a game called Subnautica, which is on, I believe, everything. PC, PS4, Xbox One. I don't think it's on Switch, but Switch doesn't count. Um, I say this <laughs> as someone who owns a Switch. Uh, it's... I am not a huge fan of these, like, aimless exploration games where it's, like, 
Uh, Ark Survival Evolved is a good example, which is like a dinosaur thing. It's like, here's we're going to put you in the middle of this island, and you can craft things, and you can uh, capture these dinosaurs, but it's in a server, so if you leave, you might come back and your dinosaurs might be dead, or you know when you restart, you lose all your stuff. Yeah. I'm not a huge fan of that because there's no really there's no directive. It's not like, sure. you know, do this thing, then do this thing, then do this thing. And I think that's what you need for um, the, the player loop to be successful and, you know, feel accomplished. Uh, yeah. That sort of serotonin to go off. Um, the way you talk about that reminds me of um, the Friday the 13th game. Yes. Yeah. Um, which I've actually, I, I've not played, but right. from like everything I've read and heard about it, everybody talks very highly of the gameplay yeah. of that. Now, remind me, did you do do the box design for that? So the boxes, uh, so I didn't do the, the the digital art, like the painting. That was right. That was concept art. Um, the branding was done by the time I got there. The cover was done by the time I got there. But the back. But you put it together. Uh, yeah. So I did it for all the countries. Okay. So U.S. was pretty much done. We had to change it once we did all the countries to make them all fit. Mm-hmm. Um, but I did the back. If you were anywhere from the U, uh, not from the U.S., I did. Your entire cover, basically. Um, That's so cool. Yeah, it's wild. It's so cool. Uh, and it's oh, and and that reminds. Sorry, go ahead. I no, I no, you're a, good. You're good. I have a couple shout outs I have to give to um, Wes Keltner, who's lead on the game, lead like director or whatever. I don't remember what his title is. I, I actually got to interview him for our website, um, and he was the one who sort of informed me on this player loop, right? So it's interesting that you brought up Friday Thirteenth. Yeah, um, really. Because that's who I sourced from me saying that. <laughs> but with Subnautica. Um, it's an underwater game, as the name might uh, suggest, and I have had so much fun streaming it. Uh, Twitch.tv slash Dormstreams. Uh, <laughs> I, I need to actually put the, the link to Dormstreams. Dormstreams. Yeah. Dormstreams. It's, it's my guitar <laughs> stream. Yeah. Uh, to Dormstreams in the, the description. So look for that in uh, in this episode's description. Thank you. Uh, You're welcome. I've, I've had a lot of fun streaming it. It's been one of those games where it's like, it sets your expectations and then it surpasses it and then it surpasses it and it surpasses it. Um, nice. there's some, there have been some really, really cool moments that my 100% genuine shock and surprise have been captured on stream and I think it's really cool. That's really awesome. Um, it's a good yeah. avenue for streaming as well because it's like, you know, I'm going to go out and I have to collect and I may not make make the game, the game sound appealing, but it's almost like cast away the game underwater. Interesting. Um, that's kind of how, how I would... Uh, you know, describe it to someone who's not really familiar with like survival games. Sure. Um, it's like, you know, you go out and get this mineral and you need that to make this new thing that'll let you breathe longer underwater, that'll let you dive deeper. That'll, and then you need to collect this to do that. Like it's, it's a lot of small tasks making big strides. Mm-hmm. Um, but I find, I usually don't like those kinds of games cause I don't feel like they have a directive. This says, okay, now do this. Okay. Now do this. It seems very not linear, but the path seems clearer to me. And it's more about player choice than aimless exploration. Sure. Uh, the other game that I want to recommend is called Into the Breach. This is Pacific Rim Chess. That's the best description I can give to this. Um, so Interesting. <laughs> Into the Breach is made by the same people who made Faster Than Light, which was a pretty big indie game. Um, another strategy game. But Into the, Into the Breach is uh, a strategy game that's set on a board, basically. Uh, it's set on a grid system. And you have three mechs that you can operate, and okay. each each mech has different abilities. And so, Pacific Rim Chess. Yeah, it's a really great description once you see the game. Yeah. Um, it's not it's not intense to run. You can run on a toaster. Like it's a it's a very low, not low quality, but very like easy to run game. It's not gonna you could run it on your MacBook. You could run it on probably run on mobile if they could port it. Like it's <laughs> it is a very low stakes game, very small game sure. um, from a size perspective. Um, it is one of the best strategy games I've ever played. I'm not a huge strategy game guy. Um, so it's kind of the, the reason I thought of both of these is they sort of, I took a chance on both of them. Someone gifted me Subnautica and I bought into the breach cause I loved FTL so much, but I'm not a huge strategy game guy. So I was kind of nervous about that one. Both games took my expectations and said, you may not like these kinds of games, but you're going to like this game. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I think they're both great, and maybe a lot of people might not have heard of them. Um, sure. Into the Breach, I believe, is only on PC, um, but I'm not quite sure about that. I could easily see it going to consoles. It's, again, a very um, easy-to-run game. I've never had, like, hiccups or anything with it, which I don't with most games. Cool. But both of those games are really interesting, and if you're, if you're a gamer, I suggest you give them a try. Cool. Hopefully there's some kind of crossover with gamers and uh, bourbon drinkers. Yeah. And <laughs> there's more crossover that, that I've seen than you would think. Yeah, sure. Uh, oh, I lost my... Hold on. 
Sorry. I pulled up uh, one thing. I, I pulled up two different notes so that I had, you know, mm. in, in place everything. But anyway, um, my tips and bits. Uh, the first thing is uh, Bourbon Taters. Um, or Tater Talks, actually, which is a blog run by Wade Woodard, um, where he basically kind of breaks down the establishment of people who think that they know what they're talking about with bourbon, mm. but they're, what they resort to is um, smooth. <laughs> gotcha. The Carlos Santana song. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, the hit song from 1999 yeah. with uh, Rob Thomas. Yes, um, um, Matchbox 20 fame. <laughs> Maybe I'll throw... I actually do like Matchbox 20 yeah, a little bit. I mean, I might, I might throw them into the tips Unwell and bits someday. Unwell a great song. Oh, it's a fantastic song. So is 3AM. I think 3AM mm. is a much better song than uh, Unwell. Unwell is more popular, of course. Sure. But I, that's a whole other conversation <laughs> for another day. <laughs> Welcome um, to Talkbox 20, our I, Rob Thomas oh, podcast. That's a... Jeez, four episodes in and we've run out of things to talk about. <laughs> nah, he has at least four solo albums, I think. Yeah. Um, so, Tater Talks, um, it, it's a blog run by Wade Woodard. Um, and basically what he is doing is in the... He, he's encouraging people to drink smarter mm. and have better conversations around, uh, around bourbon and whiskey. Right. Um, instead of just going, oh, it's... It's so smooth. I really like that. Like, yeah. you know, he's pushing you to um, think more about what you're drinking, but he's also working at making sure that everybody's experience with bourbon is is more enjoyable. Right. And 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 better rounded, too. And I'm going to use a very, ex- uh, a, a very specific example. Um, my senior graphic design project is rebranding Wild Turkey. Right. Um, and I posted a picture of it on Facebook the other day, uh, and he said, oh, it says six to eight years on the label. It's not supposed to say that. It's supposed to say the minimum age Mm. that goes into the blend. Um, and I was like, oh, I don't, I, I, I never knew about that. Yeah. So, I mean, he, he literally took it upon himself to contact Campari and Mm. say, hey, I'm sure you're aware of this, but you are doing a disservice to the people who are drinking your product right by mislabeling your product mm. um and there's something almost it's not chivalrous but it's yeah, it's just very like white knight white knighty is yeah. exactly where i was going with it um about just trying to enhance everybody's experience and uh, right. if you if you haven't checked out his blog or, or some of his work definitely go and do that because uh it's it's an opportunity not only to um, support your your bourbon community, but also to kind of enhance your experience. Hmm. You know, I think that's the the biggest thing of it. Um, but I'm also gonna back off of something a little bit more serious, and uh, I'm gonna go with uh, the series of unfortunate events. Oh, um, the Netflix, Netflix series. Okay. Oh man, I so season two came out um, a couple weeks ago. Yeah, and I am two episodes in. I was a big fan of the show when I was, or, or the, <laughs> the books, books yeah. that, w- when I was growing up. Right. And I caught myself so many times watching that show and just grinning. That's good. I mean, just, just being happy that I was seeing something that I had such a love of growing up. Yeah. Being represented in such a positive way. Right. And it's a, it's the same thing with like, I love Harry Potter. Mm. <laughs> I love the Harry Potter series. Yeah. Um, I really want to see a Harry Potter TV show, though. Hmm. Interesting. Um, I want to see seven seasons where each season is each book. Gotcha. Because um, I, I think that they could... It, sort of it, the Game of Thrones model. Sure, yeah, exactly. I mean, it could, it could be HBO. Right. Um, it could be stars. It could be FX. It doesn't matter. But I think that there is something untapped with the Harry Potter series where they can really um, break down and do a fan, do a fan service, um, do a service to their fans. Sure. Um, and I think that's what Series of Unfortunate Events on Netflix is, has been. Gotcha. I've really, really enjoyed it. That's um, awesome. And I, I'm, I'm itching to watch the next episode. You know, it's been, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been a few days. We've been kind of busy. Um, I haven't had a chance to... Um, 
watch the next one or anything, but um, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. We talked about Anderson Pack so much last episode oh. that like I, I, I want to recommend him again, but I think that that's already kind of spoken for. Yeah, it's assumed, <laughs> right? Um, but I, I like very specifically, I'm going to recommend his uh, Tiny Desk concert mm. um, just because it's it it's incredible. He's fantastic. Yeah, and I mean it just sitting and watching somebody enjoy what they do yeah so much He's infectious. like like he does and and talk about it with such passion and everything i mean it it, it is infectious yeah. yeah and it makes me want to like not just be better at you know design or podcasting or whatever but right. like as a musician too it's like oh i want that yeah you know yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm gonna give one more quick one because sure yeah bring up anderson pack uh there's a rapper who has two songs on spotify uh, named Wynn, W-Y-N-N-E. And she has a song called Catalyst that's okay. six minutes. Uh, six minute rap song. And it's incredible. It was on my Discover nice. Weekly a couple of weeks ago. Uh, cannot stop listening to it. She has some really great bars. Um, she t- one, of, one of her extended, like, I wouldn't call it a verse because there's no chorus in the song, but like one of her extended... Um, parts of her song, I guess, is, uh, I don't know how to technically talk about music, but it's all about like the quote unquote school of rap she came from. And so she's like name oh, nice. dropping people, but it's so well done. <laughs> and she's like, you know, the, the first lyric is like, I'm the, I'm the baby of logic and Cinderella. Like that's her first starting thing. What? Yeah. And that's killer. She does. She's like, she does not look anything like you imagine. She looks, she looks like every sorority girl in a way. Interesting. Um, she also has a lyric that's uh, thick as a th- I'm as thick as a bowl of oatmeal from your nonprofit, which I think is a great lyric. Um, <laughs> she's really, really, really oh talented, my gosh. and uh, I'm really excited to see what she does. I think I'm on the ground floor with her because both of her songs came out last year. Um, nice and and Catalyst, the, the song I'm talking about, came out like December. So I'm gotcha. I'm excited to see what she does next. But that's a quick little rap recommend. So those are our uh, tips and bits for the yeah. for this week. Um, I w- before we jump into where people can find us, yeah, I have to give a couple of shout outs. Okay. Um, so like I was saying earlier in the episode, um, we have had some an incredible listenership. Yes. <laughs> recently. And I mean, not just from the United States, which speaking of the U S um, California, shout out to California because they are the second most downloaded state. Really? Um, behind Kentucky yeah, of course. and the United States. It's, in- it's incredible. It's wild to me. Yeah. I, and, and. Outside of the United States, I want to ask you on air, what do you think is the second country, or the country with the second most downloads? Australia. <laughs> okay, yeah, it is Australia. Hey. <laughs> I have, I have, no prize for Tanner. I have a couple buddies I play games with here from Australia and New Zealand. Um, and I have, I have it's a, really big down there, too. I, like I've said before, I listen to so many different Australian podcasts. Yeah. Um, and I, there is some kind of crossover yeah. there. Yeah. So I, I, I just want to say a, a huge thank you, not only to the people in Kentucky who are keeping us going. Yeah. Because, I mean, Kentucky's, like, carrying us with, like, 2,600 downloads. Sure, that's insane. <laughs> but Australia and California, holy crap. Hold us down. <laughs> um, that's you really guys, interesting. You guys are killing it. And um, thank you so much for the commitment that you have to this show so far. Um I'm not intending to quit this show anytime soon. Right. You know, I mean, th- this is going to go on for as long as podcasting is available. <laughs> as and- long as Perry exists, <laughs> this is existing in some form of I'll fashion. be on my deathbed and I'll be like, bring me a glass of Weller 107 and we're going to do an episode on we're it. Gonna do, <laughs> we're going to do nose palette finish a price for Pedialyte <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, it, it just... We, we have some incredible people yeah it's awesome who are are listening to this show and i just want to say a a a huge thank you to everybody i mean i i'm really honestly super humbled by the um yeah it's the reception that we've had so conceptualize yeah um with all that being said um if people want to find us on social media, where can they do that, Tanner? I'm going to plug something different. Uh, oh, no. Okay. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. This is part of my where you can find me. Um, I'm I, My personal stuff, which I never really tweet from anymore, so I'm not even going to shut that out. Uh, at Dorm Streams is where I usually tweet. Um, Instagram, Tanner B. Chaney or Dorm Streams is fine. 
Uh, and then I also have a podcast that I do all the editing for. And this is a lark for me because I just get to talk and I don't have to do any of the hard work. So I know what Perry goes through. Um, is at Click to Learn More. Uh, it's a podcast that I do with my, my buddy. And uh, we go back and forth telling each other about things we like. So Fun. one of my podcast or one of my episodes was uh, was about how there was a conspiracy theory that right after Kendrick Lamar dropped Damn, there was going to be a second album, and I described the entire like, yeah. lineage of that. Um, so that's a really fun thing that I do, and I just want to shout that out. But I, at Dorm Streams is the best place to find me actually doing things. By the way, if you want, um, I, I want to be on a show too where I don't have to do all the work. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah like, this I, is great. <laughs> like this is awesome. I, I just go home. I go eat. Like I don't have to edit anything. Uh, I'm gonna to go home. And, this. I'm literally gonna go home and edit. Quick learn more. So sure. Yeah. We're gonna yeah, be. But, we're gonna be deep in to, audacity. You don't but, have to do this. Yeah. But I mean, like I, I really want to be on some show. Where I'm not the host of it. I just show up and I'm like, hey guys. <laughs> yeah. Here's my hour and that's all the time I have to put in. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, exactly. Um, so if you have a show that you want me on for that, <laughs> let me know. I'll be, I'll be happy to, you know, be a part of just it. Just don't make me edit it. Yeah. <laughs> it's all on you. Um, if you would like to find me on social media, I am at pritter1492. Um, just about across the board. I can't really think of anything where I, that's uh, not my handle. Um if you want to find the show, uh, we are at My Bourbon Shop on Instagram and Twitter. We are on Facebook at This Is My Bourbon Shop and Threadless, uh, where you can find all of our shirts and apparel and uh, accessories. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, that is bourbonshop.threadless.com. Uh, we also have a Patreon account up. Um, if you want to support the show with your money, uh, head to patreon.com slash podcast. Uh, for as little as a dollar a month, uh, you can say thank you with your wallet. <laughs> just imagine someone opening their wallet and like <laughs> muppeting, like, thank you. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Frank Oz. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, give us a rate and review on iTunes, too. Um, we've had some really good uh, five star reviews, but also a one star and a two star review with no feedback. Can I shout out my favorite line from a, from a review? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I know who did it now too. <laughs> okay, and I, would, I just want to say thank you to Evan for uh, <laughs> posting this, this review. There's just, but, there's a review, which the title of it is just, I listened, <laughs> which I think is the funniest, like most wholesome thing. And it's just like, I listened to this. I did it. Oh, thank you. It's Evan. cool. Thank you, Evan, so much for listening yeah, and, and giving us a, a five star uh, review. Um, I think that about does it. Awesome. For this episode. Um, Tanner, thank you for, for hanging out with me. Yeah, this my week. pleasure. Um, next week, I'm going to have uh, somebody uh, pretty special on. Oh. Um, so Mr. And, Bourbon himself? Yeah, Mr. Bourbon <laughs> Is himself. Mr. Bourbon going to make an appearance? <laughs> <laughs> Kentucky S. Bourbon. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what does the S stand for? Straight. Ah, uh, that's good. <laughs> See? Yeah, you're ready. Good content. Job. Content. Yeah. Um, so be sure to tune in for that. Uh, we really, again, appreciate everybody who listens. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, you guys are awesome. Um, rate and review, like, share, comment, all that good stuff. Um, but until we see you next week, I'm Perry. I'm Tanner. And this is my bourbon podcast. <laughs> <laughs>